Well, hello and welcome to the Thursday edition of DC Today, another up day in markets and another day of some travel uh, adventure for me. I'm actually in my hotel room in Washington, DC. I'm going to be leaving here in a moment to go give a speech tonight. And yet I wanted to give you the breakdown of today's action. And uh, then tomorrow I'm flying to Memphis, Tennessee, where I'm speaking, and then I get to go back to New York. So uh, a lot of travel back and forth stuff for me right now. And yet in the meantime, markets continue to do what they do, which is never sleep. And the markets have been on quite a bit of a tear. And today's action was again, largely related to the uh, white of the eyes of inflation, the uh, producer price index. Yesterday, Brian talked to you about what came out in the consumer price index uh, on Wednesday. The producer price index came out today and the year over year headline inflation rate for wholesale prices was 0.1%, basically flat, no inflation. Core goods at a wholesale level, both processed and unprocessed core goods have deflation over the last year, negative price movement. The um, market response today was primarily felt in the bond market. You had uh, yields drop substantially, big rally in the bond market. The 10-year, which you recall had gotten above 4%, uh, on the employment report last week from ADP is now back to 3.76%. So a really meaningful rally in bonds uh, over the last several days. I'm going to go through a couple of different news bits and then I'll give you the kind of market recap from today. Um, earnings season has officially started. That should take over one of the bigger movement of markets in the next three weeks. You had Delta Airlines and PepsiCo both released today. But now most of the big banks release tomorrow. And then over the next two weeks, we'll, we'll kind of get the vast majority of the S&P 500 releasing. Um, we're, we're aware of the inflation data. I told you what the producer price index was at a wholesale level. But I want to elaborate a, a moment about something you're going to hear more of in the, I don't know, months, quarters ahead called base effects. I think that there is some validity um, to this notion of trading base effects. And what I mean by that is that a year ago, the producer price index had a year over year number of plus 11%. And so the number that today's 0% is being compared against was a very high number a year ago. And that is distortive. Okay. And yet the same was true a year ago, the other direction that the base effect of what the 11% was being looked at was against a much lower number. So you've had sort of severe movements that then allow the year over year comparison to be somewhat distorted by uh, the base effect either being very high a year ago or very low two years ago, et cetera. The month of um, July and the month of August a year ago, were, were much lower. And so you may have a base effect that causes it to feel a little different in a month or two from now. My point being that there is much more uh, exhaustive data than just simply the year over year PPI and year over year CPI number available. You have monthly sequential, you can annualize three months, six month, nine month, 12 month averages. There isn't much data uh, I guess if you wanted to find an inflation-friendly number, uh, meaning uh, for the pro-inflation, uh, inflation hawkish camp, it would probably be core inflation X, um, food and energy, so core, uh, but still including shelter uh, or focusing on services um, year over year. I guess that would be the number where it seems a bit stickier. But more or less, when you look at these three, six, nine month numbers uh, with food and energy, without food and energy, especially without shelter, all of those numbers are kind of making the argument I've been making for some time. Um, so tip spreads are the bond markets voting on what all this looks like. You right now have a two year implied inflation expectation of 1.95% for the next two years. And for five years, you have 2.19%. So very um, 
Fed friendly inflation expectations implied in the multi trillion dollar bond market. Uh, other than the PPI stuff, China exports were down 12.5% last month on a year over year basis. Um, that's their total exports. But in the United, their exports to the United States have dropped 11 months in a row now. Um, jobless claims came in at 237,000. It had been at a 254,000 running weekly average just a few weeks ago. So uh, a lot of data points coming in today. Um, and then you get Senator Elizabeth Warren yelling that uh, Chairman Powell and the Fed need to stop raising rates immediately. And, I've, and that hasn't been happening. You haven't seen a deep level politicization. I figured that there was somebody coming. I just didn't know if it would be from the right or the left who would strike first at wondering why the Fed is taking such an, aggress uh, taking such a, such an aggressively hawkish posture here with monetary policy. I think that the Dow up 48 points, but the NASDAQ up 1.5% tells you kind of the risk on nature of today's rally. Energy was actually down 0.4%, even though oil prices were all the way up. They were up another 2%, up to $77 a barrel. Um, but communication services on the uh, S&P was up 2.3%. So you had that movement higher in some of the tech adjacent areas of the market. And we talked about the rally in bonds. So that's kind of the scoop for today. Um, all week, it's more or less been a very friendly environment for risk assets. And I think that uh, the expectation right now in the market is, okay, it looks like the Fed is going to go ahead and do another rate hike. There are probably more people like me than not who don't understand why they are. But nevertheless, the market seems to price that they are doing it and that they're not going to do another one. The market has done that several times along the way here, and I've certainly done it myself several times along the way. Uh, I've been wrong and the market's been wrong, um, but in this case, there's a lot of logic behind the idea that they may go forward with one more hike uh, just sort of because they've already kind of threatened to and leave it in place from there. But we'll see. There's still a couple more weeks till even that Fed meeting, let alone all the ones thereafter. So I will leave it there here for the DC Today. Uh, thank you, of course, for listening and for watching and for reading the DC today. Mm -hmm.